There are two hypotheses associated with the mean value theorem, and once those two hypotheses are satisfied, then there is a particular conclusion that is also satisfied, and that conclusion is written down here. Now, if we look at that conclusion, we actually need five pieces of information, and we're going to begin with the value of A. Now, A is simply the leftmost point on your interval. So in this case, the value of A would equal zero. B is going to be the rightmost point on your interval. So in this case, the value of B is going to equal two. Now, moving on to F of A, that simply means we're going to plug our A value into the function. So in this case, we're going to say F of A is the same thing as F of zero, and that would equal E to the power of negative zero. Let's recall that negative zero, of course, is zero and that e to the zero or any number to the zero is equal to one. So there is the value of our f of a, and then our f of b would be f of two in this case, and that would equal e to the power of negative two. And for now, we'll just leave it in that form. Now, the fifth thing that we need is the f prime of c, but we don't have that yet. We only have the f function. We don't have f prime. So in order to get f prime, we're going to have to step aside and calculate the derivative. So we'll rewrite our function as f of x is equal to e to the negative x, and then we're going to compute its derivative. So we'll write down f prime of x. Now, for the derivative of an exponential function, what you do is two things. You basically recopy that exponential function, so we'll have e to the negative x, but then the chain rule sort of kicks in here, and you have to multiply by the derivative of this power up here. So in other words, the derivative of negative x. Of course, the, deriv the derivative of negative x would be negative one. So we can simplify this by writing our f prime of x as equaling negative e to the power of negative x. Now, we should also plug in c because that is the number that we are seeking in this problem. So f prime of c would equal negative e to the power of negative c. So that is the fifth and final component that we need for the conclusion of the mean value theorem. Let's rewrite the conclusion as well as everything that we know so far. And what we'll do next is plug in all five components. So our f prime of c was negative e to the power of negative c. This is equal to our f of b, which was e to the power of negative two, minus our f of a, and then divided by our b minus our a value. Now let's just simplify the denominator. We can say that two minus zero, of course, is two. And now our job is to solve for the value of c. And this look, looks a little bit daunting, but let us begin that process by writing this over one. And once we do that, we can cross multiply. So we'll multiply those two quantities as well as those two quantities. When we multiply two and negative e to the negative c, you'll get negative two e to the negative c. And then going the other way, e to the negative two minus one times one is still e to the negative two minus one. We'll divide both sides of this by negative two. Cancel it out on the left-hand side. So now we have e to the negative c is equal to e to the negative two minus one, all of which is divided by negative two. Now we need to sort of bring this c down from the power. And to do that, remember that you can take the natural log on both sides. And by doing that, once we introduce a logarithm, there's a property that allows us to drag that negative c into the front. It sort of becomes a coefficient. So we have negative c multiplied by the natural log of e. And then on the other side, we have the natural log of this quantity here. Now looking at our equation, we see we have a natural log of e, but natural log of e is just equal to one. So this quantity is equal to one, and negative c times one is still negative c. And now it's relatively easy to solve for the value of c because all we need to do is divide both sides by negative one. Remember this negative sign is an implied negative one. So just divide both sides by negative one to cancel it out on the left side. And so this is the value of c. Admittedly, it's a bit hideous. So perhaps to bring it back down to earth, we can type that into a calculator. And when we do that, we will obtain an approximate value of C of about 0.84. So you can you know, consider the exact value above or you can consider the approximate value. Either one is correct. We're not quite done with the question, although we have found the value of C. The question also wanted us to graph 
and it said specifically to graph the function the secant line through the endpoints and then the tangent at c f of c. So to understand that, let's go and graph this function right here. Now remember, we're only graphing the function from the left endpoint of 0 to the right endpoint of 2. And to help us graph, we could replug those endpoints in. Remember, when we plugged f of 0 in, we got 1. And when we did f of 2, we got e to the negative 2. On a calculator, e to the negative 2 is approximately 0.14. So basically, we're going to graph the point 0, 1, which would be, of course, up here, and then the point 2, 0.14, which would be down here. We have an exponential function, so there's curvature to it. It's exponentially decreasing, so we'll sketch it accordingly. So that's a rough sketch, and let us now introduce the secant line. The secant line is very simply a segment that joins the left endpoint to the right endpoint. So this line right here would be our secant line. And then we also want to plot the point that the question called c comma f of c. Now recall that our c value was approximately 0 0.84. To get f of c we would technically have to plug our 0 0.84 into the function. So we would have e to the power of negative 0 0.84. And if you put that into a calculator you're going to get approximately 0 0.43. So that would be the value of our f of c. Let's plot that point. This is not to scale, so we'll kind of estimate it. 0 0.84 might be about right there. 0.43 would be about right there. And if we make a tangent line at that point, so if we draw a tangent line through that point, tangent to the curve, we can see that that tangent line is indeed parallel to the secant line. Take a look at the slopes here. So the slope of this tangent line right here visually you can see is indeed equal to the slope of this secant line right there. So in other words, those two lines are in fact parallel. And that is sort of a visual demonstration of the mean value theorem.